Hello everyone, this is Lou. Thank you for joining us at Ascension 2021. We are here with Mr. Kenji Kohashi, who is a former actor, film director, creative director, event producer, and the Human Miracle CEO as a guest. To hear about a challenger's mindset amidst COVID-19, welcome Mr. Kohashi, welcome Takashima Mayor. Thank you for the warm welcome. Thank you for having me. Mr. Kohashi, firstly, please introduce your bio and business. Yes, as introduced, I have been working as an actor from the age of 8 to 27. When I was 27, I started to think about my future, what kind of person I wanted to be in my 30s. So I decided to stop working and go over to the United States to study abroad. I took a spring vacation and in Miami, I got to meet Ultra Music Festival. And this is where I got to experience and see the event. And I've been traveling around the world, attending events ever since. I first started my event career by creating and organizing my own birthday event. Then I've been producing events ever since. I've made and produced events such as Ultra Japan, a music festival. And in Japan, it was one of the biggest music festivals from abroad. I've also produced Star Island, a 3D technology show performance using a show performance and stories to create and promote the event. I've done that in Japan and Singapore for New Year's Eve countdowns and also in Saudi Arabia. I've also worked on, in 2019, Tokyo Motor Show, an event called Contact, using 500 drones, using LED and drones. Looking back, I've also produced films and documentary movies as well. Uh, recently, I've been a part of the Paralympic closing event, and, uh, and I did the show director. Also, uh, I run a event company, so I help companies PR production and help with events and making PRs and production for companies. Thank you. What are you so mayor? His ideas are amazing. His ideas and challenges are so broad and very global mindset as well. He's very good with connecting Japan and the global market. So today's event's theme is Ascension, and that is exactly what it is. I've been to events he produced, such as Ultra and Star Island. And as Fukuoka City, we are working hard on startup businesses. So we've looked a lot of new technologies from overseas as well. But using that technology for entertainment is very fascinating. Usual firework events is always looking up in the sky, watching the fireworks. But for Star Island, you are dancing, looking at the sky, but also drones in between, and also having accessories like IoT wristbands, and having all those interactions, and using the whole environment as a screen. The ideas are so fresh and wonderful. So what is your mindset? Yes, as discussed, I stopped working as an actor at the age of 27, started traveling around the world, and when I traveled the world, for me, 
I've been making excuses, saying that I'm an actor, so I don't have the time. And making these environments my excuses and not finding my future for myself. So, when I stopped acting and stepped out into the world, I got my emotional rehabilitation. I was able to see the sunset and cry, see the starlight and be touched. And in Japan, I didn't have that environment. So, when I stepped out of Japan in the global environment, I was able to feel that. I came back to Japan and felt this sense of uncomfortableness. I was able to realize this uncomfortableness thanks to the experiences that I've had outside of Japan. And it made me realize that by attending these events and attending these events and feeling these little things, I felt that these little things are what's important. And coming back to Japan, I felt this uncomfortableness. I was started to wonder why in the global world people are able to make these events, but in Japan we can't. And I started to wonder why can't we do this in Japan? And if we want to do this in Japan, what can I do? And so I started to think, how do I express this emotion in Japan by making events? And if we take an example, looking back, it would be a new type of entertainment. And as Mr. When I make events and produce events, I like to take these three key points into consideration. It's encounter, knowledge, and uncomfortableness. For example, by encounter, at Ultra, I was able to meet a firework master. And these firework masters are very, very traditional. And they, when they were able to see these young audiences being touched by fireworks, I was able to make that connection for them, that encounter. And I feel like I made a future for them in that event, through that event. So looking at the world right now, I have these questions come up in my mind. Why can't we do this? Why is this this? And in Japan at that time, I've been feeling this uncomfortableness, which was to save tradition. And I felt that Japanese people have been if we take fireworks as an example, at first, fireworks, when they came into Japan, the people who brought it put so much power into creating and innovating that it touched people. The people that experienced it really, really felt touched and were fascinated. And I feel like this is the reason why fireworks became a tradition. So in conclusion, I feel like we really need to make fans in order to make a tradition. And I feel like in order to make tradition and save tradition, we can't be forcing it on them. And it's important to collaborate the technology and the knowledge of that time. And what I had as knowledge back then was that I met a sound designer and I also had the experience and team. And, in, and by collaborating those three together, I was able to make one big event. Also, something else that I felt is that I've been seeing news that fireworks were being canceled. So I asked the firework masters why, and they said that they needed to make everything a paid event. 
And I felt this need to change and update the tradition. Traditionally, fireworks are a free event. But as it became more popular with SNS, uh, more people were coming to the events and securities were needed and the place was packed. So to update the event, we needed to divide these areas and make a, a paint event. その有料で区分けをしつつ、そのエリアだけの人たちがお金を払って楽しめるっていうしなきゃいけないんです。そうじゃないと我々生き残れないんですって言ってて、まあそれに対してもいやであれば。I felt that if so, the importance to update the tradition hit me. And I felt that it's very important to take tradition and update it to solve problems in everyday life. So I took these three key points, encounter, knowledge, uncomfortableness, and made it one event, which was Star Island. And sorry, I've been talking for such a long time, but this is my So listening to you, it seems like you're very sensitive to this uncomfortableness. And this comes from you going to overseas and open up, up your mind and accepting yourself to be aware of this uncomfortableness. So you can go overseas and come back and see all this uncomfortableness of Japan. So when you do go overseas, it's not just about learning about the world, but you can also realize more about Japan. So you can realize the good and the bad and the uniqueness of Japan. So listening to you, it seems like you have this fishing hook in your mind, catching all those ideas. So having that ability to catch ideas is very important. Well, because I've seen both sides of the world, Japan and outside of Japan, I feel like I have both perspectives. And I also feel that Japan has so much potential and so much more that Japan can do. But living and being in Japan, you don't really realize those potentials or little things. So I feel like there's so many good things in Japan that can be discovered or delivered. But I feel like it's really important to realize that gap between Japan and the world. But Star Island, if we ask if it's completely global, it's not. Of course, we use traditional fireworks, hanabi, but it also has lots of aspects of Japan in the 90-minute story. We start off with this sort of ritual, and that actually comes from Izumo Taisha, Izumo Grand Shrine's tradition of welcoming the gods. I've actually recently attended one of the ceremonies, and I really like to take inspirations from these traditional ceremonies and events, and taking them into my events and producing my events. And besides these aspects, if we look at music, lights, lasers, drones, they come from my global knowledge or experiences. And I feel like Japanese people are really good at taking inspirations from outside, outside traditions, cultures, and harmonizing it into our own. And this is what I try to take in. So when I think about Japanese animation, they are very good with putting Japanese tradition into the episodes. And as a global fan, that connects to reassessment of Japanese culture. Also, you were talking about domestic demands. When it comes to Japan, we have a big business market. 
So, example, if we compare ourselves to Korea, which has a smaller market, they were ready to have a bigger global market in a very early age. So, they made it very important to have English education for contents and global businesses. Japanese population is shrinking, so our market is shrinking as well. So we have to change our minds to improve and ascend as a country and focus more on global business markets. I really feel the same way about that. I feel like we need to level up Japanese entertainment to the global standard. I really want people to come to Japan for its entertainment and not just Japanese tradition. And I also don't want to reply on Japanese culture. And it's really important to tell and keep the Japanese culture, but relying on it too much is dangerous. For example, if we take the billboard rankings, there are artists from various countries like Spain, China in the rankings. There's, there's, there's nothing weird about it. And they're not making that because of tradition. We think, oh, is it an American song? But it's actually from BTS, a Korean band. So it, I think it's really important for Japanese artists and entertainment to catch up to the global standard. And I feel like we push and rely too much on tradition. So if we look back, like I said, Japanese people, like ramen, kanji, Italian, also curry, we're really good at taking international standards and adding our own twist. Cars too, uh, we take international standards and adding our own twist, we make our own Japanese brands. I feel like for entertainment, I think that's really important. So we really need to take in the international standards and make a global entertainment. I see when it comes to entertainment, let's talk about the closing ceremony of Paralympics. All eyes were on you. Everyone had high expectations of having the image of Japan. What kind of message Japan will send through this entertainment stage ceremony? So you can't force old traditional Japan into entertainment. So it must have been very hard to come up with that balance. What were the struggles of the production of the yes, ceremony? With the limited amount of time and restrictions, and everyone all around the world will be watching the ceremony. So having to create that ceremony, taking on traditions from the past. So I, of course, wanted to take in Japanese tradition, but I also thought that the most important thing was not technology, but to focus on human beings and focusing on people. 
and showing how everyone all over the world can be special. And instead of performing a futuristic performance in the ceremony, I decided to highlight that the world itself is beautiful already. And I wanted people to be inspired to be looking at the world from a very different perspective and realizing that the world already is beautiful on its own. So I really wanted to focus and express that the world right now already has various scenery, various colors, various seasons. And it was my goal to make people realize that the earth is so beautiful. That's why I didn't really focus on Japan, but focused on the world itself. And I wanted people to change their perspective looking into their everyday lives. And this is what I told my team and myself as the main goal. There must have been a lot of pressure. Was it hard? Oh, yes. There was pressure, knowing that so many people were going to be watching. But the event itself and the ceremony itself, it wasn't my event. It was everyone's event and everyone's ceremony. So at first, when I got the offer, to help with the event and the ceremony, I made up my mind that I will accept and appreciate all of the process of making up the ceremony. So, of course, in the middle, there were so many struggles and it was very hard and stressful. But even those experiences really helped the ceremony and it also motivated everyone. And thanks to everyone's hard work, it paid off. And at the end, it was a success. I really got so many power from everyone. We became one. And actually, the weather forecast said that it was going to be 80% rain, but it actually didn't rain and it was sunny the day. The Paralympic closing ceremony was great and such a success. But let's move on into the next topic. As an event producer, drastic changes have been expected amidst COVID-19. But how did you overcome this? Yes, well, 2020 and also 2021, for me, from an event company perspective, I have to say that everything was cancelled, all events were cancelled in the past few years, so... I don't know if this is a good message coming from a CEO, but I've actually decided to accept everything and living life, we all have our ups and downs. So I decided to look at the bigger picture and the brighter future for us. So looking at the big picture, even though we lost a lot of things, and we struggled a lot in the past few years. I feel like I was able to change my mind and not be hurt by the pandemic. And I tried to change perspective and look on the brighter side of the future and look for new discoveries and new findings. So I decided to experiment and use those few years. So instead of trying to get something back from the past, 
I was actually able to realize a lot of things because I lost a lot of things in the past few years. So I decided to change my mind and look into the. So, for example, if we take the Paralympics, if I had been too busy with other events, I probably wouldn't have been able to help with the event. And also, usually, I am traveling all around the world.、Uh, mostly half of the year, I'm gone out of Japan. But because I had that time, I was able to go all over Japan and discover new things.、Uh, I got to discover its potential, scenery, people. Technology, and it hit me that Japan is really a beauty, and I actually felt it a shame that I hadn't known earlier. I've actually been doing new projects now that I had the chance. To work with, which are regional revitalization projects and also city development projects. So with COVID, I got the chance to look and observe and start new projects. I actually got more time in my hands. So instead of being busy with events, I actually got to wait for the next wave of opportunities. So I feel like people tend to blame things, blame bad things on the environment or other people, and take things very negatively. But I've actually come to the conclusion. That we really need to accept and be thankful for both good and bad things, all the ups and downs, and I feel like this is all thanks to COVID. So I've been very positive about it. So I think it was really hard for a lot of people mentally to look things in perspective. It's very important, and you were talking about materialistic world. Recently, I heard something about mentality. It's not about having strong or weak mentality. It's about having control, and I really agree with that. So you don't have to have a strong mentality and accept every criticism. It's about stress relief. And for you, I think it's really amazing that you came to this point. For a lot of people, it was financially very hard. Yes, we were hit very hard as well. And when I say this, trust me, I am telling the truth. We were financially hit, and even now we're not better. But I've actually come to terms with myself and my surroundings. And I've decided that I really need to accept all of the good and bad. So I've actually stopped to realize both bad and good, and I've come to terms to accept everything. And, you know, there is a saying that everything you see is a mirror of yourself. But I feel like I've actually mentally prepared and cared for my mental health. And look at myself and care for my mental health. This few years. I see. So we don't know about the future, but COVID 19 situation is slowly improving. So having all your experience under your belt, 
What is your new challenge? What is your next step? Well, yes. Uh, Entertainment-wise, with events and festivals, I've actually been thinking before COVID.、Uh, I feel like all events, traditional events, had goals. For example, Japanese traditional events held festivals for rice farming. And well, looking back at my first event, I produced my own birthday event, but this was to celebrate it with other people and connect other people and thank other people for everything that they've done for me. So I really feel that for events, we really need to focus on its main goal, and it's really important to remember that all events need a goal. So, when I realized that、um, in the future, when I produce events, I really think it's important for me to trigger awareness for people and let people know. The real meaning of their lives. And I really want people to know that they are connected to everything, nature, people. So, this is what I put as my goal for all of my future events. And this doesn't have to be just events, it can be developing cities. So, I really want to use my experience that I experience overseas and my experience when I know what's missing in Japan. And I really want to use that knowledge to enlighten and fill in the gaps. And Takashima Mayor, you developed the city of Fukuoka. So my project isn't as massive as yours. But I really feel that connection and that need to make a trigger for people and let them realize and for people to be connected. And happy. So, what are you saying? When you're talking about city developments, I really want to know your opinion. What are you going to do? Well, I have a few projects that I can't really talk about. So, what I think about you is that you're an actor, you're an event organizer, you're very creative, and you're also talking about city development. So, I think it's important for people like you to cross over genres and connect them and give fresh new ideas from your point of view. I think that's great, and you are exactly that person who can do so. Well, it's funny because my name is Kohashi, which means small bridge in Japanese. So I actually really want to cross over genres and connect people. Wow. You sound like you're auditioning for a news encore. <laughs> yes, I want to build small bridges. I see. Oh, yes. So my parents are from Fukushima, but I was born in Tokyo. So, my hometown, I don't really have one. So, I've been all over the world and I've been getting inspiration from everywhere. So, hopefully, sometime soon you can invite me to Fukuoka City. You're more than welcome. We'll be waiting. Thank you so much. We had a really interesting conversation going on, but now we are running out of time. Mayor, Mr. Kohashi's company's name is The Human Miracle. What do you think about that? It comes to my mind that online events like these are great. But during this COVID 19 times, 
It's important to know the good parts of online events, but I wonder the worth of reality. Not just the topics we touch today, I think the clarity of reality, you, know, you cannot beat with virtuality. So, if today we were sitting next to each other, maybe we would touch on different topics. Maybe there would be different miracles. So, also knowing the good parts of online events, I want to treasure the little miracles of meeting people in person. So, I think it's a great company name. Thank you. I really feel like with virtual or online meetings and events, we meet in such a limited time that we tend to spend time efficiently. But with real events, we get to experience random experiences or chance encounters. And I feel like it's really the process that counts, not the results. And we come across these wonderful serendipities. And you get to encounter the unexpected. And that's where I see the beauty of real life events. やっぱここはちょっとオンラインとはまた違う。That's what I thought after hearing your message. So I hope we can see each other in person soon. Yes, definitely. Please enjoy Fukuoka's gourmet. Yes, I love Fukuoka. Please give a message to Mr. Kohashi and give you a closing words. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Mr. Kohashi, you're changing the game in every step you take. In today's conversation, I think your words about being sensitive about Japan's uncomfortableness was very helpful to know. All these common services we can get is changing during this COVID times. So experiencing this different routine, I think it could lead to a new discovery. So being sensitive and aware of this uncomfortableness can lead to new challenges, new businesses, and new services. So after this hard times, I think we can learn from this experience, and I hope we can provide new global services and businesses. So thank you so much for this wonderful occasion. Thank you for having me. Mr. Kohashi, Takashima Mayor, thank you for joining us today.